is Alexander Hagen. I'm the CEO of a small, medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley and a former financial analyst and financial journalist. Tonight, I'm inquiring into the Benghazi Gate affair. I've done about 2,500 hours worth of research on Libya, and I've done a previous series uh, called Mechanics of Disinformation, where I look at how does incorrect information enter the system, um, and how is it distorted uh, in our media. And so this is a very interesting case because up until now we've had zero visibility into the mechanics of disinformation in Libya where it's been very difficult. Now that we have a chance to inquire more deeply than just these talking points. But so that we can get everyone on board including people that we completely disagree with. The key questions about the mechanics of disinformation in this case, which is basically somebody in the CIA had accurate information throughout this conflict. They gave it to people in the executive branch, specifically the decision-making group in the executive branch is this group here, the United States National Security Council. The three primary people that advocated the intervention in Libya to be a violent regime overthrow instead of uh, peacekeeping, which is a big problem because we had we had promised Libya improved relations for giving up their WMD program and they were willing to institute reforms and in elections certainly by June under Saif al-Islam and uh, under other people since Gaddafi was quite an old man at this time. So um, the, this group are the group that are distorting information from what we can tell. Um, and uh, so the CIA is probably handing it to this group right and then they're doctoring it perhaps before it hits the group. And Samantha uh, is one of the people, Samantha Power, Susan Rice, Hillary Clinton were supposedly the group that pushed this hard. Um, so at any rate, <clears throat> I will try to keep this as short as possible for you. Why did we arm the people who killed Chris Stevens? Uh, and then, why did we not respond promptly? to the problems and so I can answer both of those questions. We armed the people who killed Chris Stevens because the only people capable of overthrowing Gaddafi were the Libya Islamic Fighting Group which had fought in Afghanistan, the Balkans and Iraq and the supposed number two in Al Qaeda we assassinated in Pakistan via a drone was a man named Abu Yahya Alibi who had been one of the primary uh, men running that and one of the most powerful military commanders in Libya was a very close uh, friend of his and revenge was certainly probably uh, wished for. So <clears throat> I know we armed those people because they were the only people capable of fighting um, because the demonstrations that broke out were actually fairly limited initially. Only about 350 people were killed and they did siege uh, weapon stations um, uh, so any government would have probably had this amount of casualties in preventing arms from help falling into their hands. If a military base or an armory was attacked here in the U.S., there certainly would have been quite a strong response. <clears throat> so why did we not respond promptly? The reason we didn't respond promptly is because we want to maintain influence in Libya. Um, if we had responded with a strong attack at that time, it could have provoked a very strong anti-American sentiment in Libya. And in fact, uh, we accomplished more or less what we wanted, which was that the people of Benghazi then uh, marched and uh, tried to force the militias to disarm uh, because the reformist elements in Libya uh, do uh, uh, are thankful to the U.S. So there are many, many people in Libya that did not like the NATO invasion at all and the Gallup poll of 10 Arab states indicates not a single Arab country's population supported the U.S. NATO militarization of this protests because generally uh, revolutions have a much higher chance of success especially in recent times if they are overthrow the government peacefully such as in the Philippines or in Russia, uh, rather than overthrow, overthrowing the government violently, which is usually done with Western military intervention. Speaking of this, 
Uh, for those who might have some uh, doubt about this matter, let's see if I can get this for you. So this is a list of military interventions in the history of the United States, almost all of which had bad effects. Um, so there you have it. And they almost always start with a propagandist reason, just as Hitler gave propagandist reason. He said, I will give a propagandist reason for starting this war. Never mind whether it is plausible or not. The victor will not be asked afterwards whether he told the truth or not. So this was to encourage his own generals to gamble as heavily as they did. So then the next question we have is, why are General Allen and General Petraeus both being compromised? And the answer to that is certainly partly because Petraeus was already throwing Obama under the bus um, prior to the election. And um, the key was to suppress all of this until the election occurred uh, to keep this powder cake from igniting and actually affecting in a major way the elections. And it very well might have had the Hurricane Sandy not occurred, burying it off of the front page for a while. Now, we know for a fact that Susan Rice and Hillary Clinton lied in the beginning of the uh, Libya campaign, and that the big lies that they made was Clinton said that uh, Gaddafi should stop killing his own people and that he had to go in order for talks to occur. This was not a right under the resolution we ourselves wrote, and we violated it from A to Z. No flying of uh, militants in the, uh, in the uh, uh, either side, and we flew around these Islamists into the um, uh, Berber areas, which is another group that was rebelling. Uh, we uh, had thousands of troops on the ground, mainly Qatari, and if you had all the Western Special Forces, certainly at least a thousand Western Special Forces. And then there was Turkey as well. Uh, and then as far as killing his own people, uh, this is semantics for uh, we're going to play hardball and they're going to say uncle before we deal. And the problem with that is that that was a betrayal of the UN resolution, which is why Russia and China will not help the U.S. and the Security Council in the case of Syria because they f uh, feel we committed, we defrauded them. Um, in the case of Susan Rice, her biggest lie was claiming that tens of thousands of lives were saved in Benghazi. Um, and then, of, of course, Obama went on to say avert a massacre that would have stained the conscience of the world. So that was a lie as well. But um, I'm not going to go after Obama right now because he was pulled into this, supposedly. Uh, although I, I, he, we, he's totally culpable for continuing the neocon war on terror uh, and continuing uh, arms industry uh, that is unconscionable, just as I tried to show you uh, right there. So. Now getting on to point B. So the, the questions we have is, why did we arm the Islamists? Um, why did we uh, violate our deal with Gaddafi that uh, we would have improved relations if he voluntarily disarmed? Because it sends a terrible message to other people that can, that such as the North Koreans, that if they disarm, uh, they're doomed. Uh, or the Iranians, uh, you, if you make deals with people, you need to keep them. Uh, this is um, the problem. Uh, and to keep the deal simply means to show good faith when the other side is uh, willing to implement elections, which is, as far as we understand it, uh, what they stated publicly in June, that they would be willing to have talks, constitution, and elections. So we know that Rice and Clinton have lied publicly on this matter previously. So then there's the aspect of the tail wagging the dog in that um, at the beginning of the uh, uh, Libya outbreak, um, a number of claims were printed by the entire media that all came from one group in Switzerland that was part of the rebellion. So essentially it would be like um, the judge reprinting one side in a, a civil conflicts case and distributing it as the actual facts to the jury which is the Viagra rape, which was debunked. Heavy weapon use of civilians never occurred. Um, and virtually every uh, black mercenary said this who sparked uh, the lynching of blacks. And I've talked about this before, so I want to try to stick to the uh, relatively new material. So we 
So the tail wagging the dog aspect of it is where was the administration's information base? Did it come from the intelligence community or did it come from the press? Um, so where is the disinformation entering? To uh, Was U.S. government disinformed by a media eager to oust Gaddafi as a blood sport with plenty of loot? The media and the military companies are owned by many of the same interests. In the case of the New York Times, uh, the New York Times is tied with Israel. There is the owner. Um, and so the liberal press also has an interest in this uh, uh, war on terror. The other aspect is uh, here, this map should show you that this is a map of the Arab Spring. And what it shows <clears throat> is that in the beginning it was Egypt and Tunisia. These are the two that actually had revolutions and the plan was uh, to uh, put Libya in as a, a, a anchor to, for us to be able to co-opt or control these revolutions rather than allowing a radical left-wing uh, leader or uh, leadership in the Libyan Jamahiriya influence Tunisia and Egypt. So let's see here, getting back to the main points. So we've armed, uh, okay, um, the hawkishness comes to, from its ties to pro-Israeli elements, perhaps. The French and the British press all seemed eager to repeat stories and the rest intervene were not facts checks. So we have to ask if this National Security Council had the real info and I want to know who altered this information to achieve the original talking points. So here we have all this investigation over four American lives when what happened in Libya has sparked flows of arms in the hands of extremists, has definitely bolstered Al-Qaeda tremendously, um, and has led to the collapse of Mali, a potential refugee situation in Africa of perhaps a million people. But And do we make any inquiry into all that? No. But uh, if four Americans are killed, yes, so probably 20,000 people have been killed in Libya so far. And the fallout can, extends to, you know, you destroy the psyche of a country when you push it through this sort of violence. The country's being terrorized by uh, uh, militant groups. Even the government has been terrorized by militant groups. There's a good article here. Uh, let's see here if I can get it for you. So this article in Middle East Online describes how the country is basically run by the militants. Uh, that the government can't even function, they purge everyone who has ties to the previous government, which is basically, possibly, an uh, enormous amount of the technocratic class. So it's similar to debathification, which was largely a disaster in Iraq. Okay, <clears throat> so let's see, getting back on point here. So who made the decision initially to ignore many truths uh, that were distorted or destroyed? Who made the decision of the press run with the many horror stories about the 1969 revolutionary Libyan government led by Muammar Gaddafi, which turned out later to be untrue? We armed and trained religious uh, reactionary militants. The very same people pointed their weapons at the U.S. ambassador. Why were U.S. officials attacked by the people they armed? Isn't that actually the most important question? What is the truth? Then who made the decision to commit fraud on the people of the world by confusing and distorting the facts? Why are four major military figures having their careers halted? Petraeus, Allen, and Ham. And then uh, there's another good piece here. Um, which is with Ben Swan trying to figure this out. So what sort of schism is occurring between the executive and the military? And its obvious motivation is that they turned on, uh, Petraeus turned on Obama publicly before the election. And uh, there's an article called Petraeus throws Obama under the bus um, that you'll find in the Weekly Standard by William Crystal. And then of course, um, Bob Gates resigned, potentially realizing the ramifications of arming uh, religious extremists to overthrow a government that was cooperating with the U.S. in their war on terror.
and we have a general trend here of arming Sunni Wahhabi Salafist groups in Libya and Syria after selling 80 billion dollars of the arms to them so again referring to this map um, Saudi Arabia uh, Qatar Kuwait Bahrain this whole area in here um, has uh, was uh, sold the most weapons in all of US history and these weapons all flowed into Libya and are flowing into Syria and Turkey is being used as a staging ground for all this and I'm not going to repeat what you can find elsewhere such as the fact that Chris may have been run, making a deal to transship weapons to Turkey at that very night because he was meeting with the Turkish ambassador Qatar has become the kingmaker um, every aspect of the peacekeeping resolution was turned into a war making resolution um, let's see here I think that pretty much covers these points why did the Americans maintain lax security in Benghazi when the quote unquote love between the Wahhabi Salafists and the US government Libya and Syria clearly could not fix the damage done by in particular the treatment of Palestinians since the 1960s which is particularly apropos tonight uh, with the atrocities going on in Gaza there was an Israeli military commander who said we have to reduce these people to the Middle Ages and you can Google this this is not a uh, wild-eyed accusation then of course the damage of Abu Ghraib the damage of Guantanamo the damage of Iraq the damage of drone strikes um, so, and what were they thinking? I mean, the uh, the, cali the Islamic Caliphate flag associated with Al Qaeda was hoisted over the revolution's headquarters after the revolution occurred. Even the Red Cross had been attacked in Benghazi. And why did Ansar al Sharia and their cohorts attack the Americans who had armed them? And presumably, they felt they had gotten what they wanted out of the Americans, and now could give the Americans what they wanted to give them once Gaddafi was out of the way. Now, should we not hold our government accountable for lying to us? Even if you support the Libya intervention, there's all of this disinformation going on. Now, the problem with being able to extend this investigation to go all the way back to the talking points about the abuse of UN Resolution 1973, the arming of Islamists, is that the people who are on the Democratic Party side are trying to provide cover for Obama and Rice right or wrong they may lash them in private I'm even I think they're too ill-informed to even do that the people on the right who are going after Obama absolutely support what he did in Libya because uh, arming the jihadists there is a secondary to getting access to the oil controlling the country and then it allows us to maintain this military empire by having a justification for it no al-qaeda why would people uh, support this ultra it's enormous amount of the US economy now enormous so the only people left would be um, people that don't support the military industrial complex unfortunately So Obama's run a very aggressive neocon strategy lauded by some of the most sinister figures from the Bush administration and Gore Vidal was initially very enthusiastic he was a very interesting man who I've been studying lately uh, since the, uh, the sunsetting of the Ron Paul campaign um, and I have some very conservative friends who find him quite uh, eloquent and interesting just as a thinker and he's very constitution oriented and he's he uh, uh, was raised uh, uh, reading to his grandfather the first senator from Oklahoma so he knew what real conservatives were like in the old days that they were supportive of the Constitution small government non-interventionist which right now sounds like a radical leftist to a lot of people because the Republican Party has been hijacked but if you have a voice demand that the investigation go back to the outbreak you can use the argument why did we arm religious extremists in Libya known to be sympathetic to the people we are torturing waterboarding and bombing all over the world we are reluctant to call them al-Qaeda but the former Libya Islamic fighting group leader Abu Yahya al-Libi was assassinated by the US just days before the attack 
Every intervention seems to start with a lie. The Spanish-American War started with, with a very uh, suspicious blowing up of an American ship in harbor in Cuba and led to the deaths of 600,000 Filipinos, was uh, opposed by almost all major American intellectuals. Uh, worth their salt. The Gulf of Tonkin incident was we uh, was a um, false flag. In other words, an auto goal where we killed our own people um, in order to justify a war. The Iraq War was based on a lie, clearly, and the War on Terror is definitely overall the whole thing is a lie and a coup d'état, which uh, overthrew our uh, representative form of government, replaced it with an autocratic dictatorship because. Um, and, and I'm quoting Gore Vidal here, the Magna Carta, which is a basis of law from the 1200s, uh, was essentially breached, which is due process, just due process. And of course, habeas corpus was overturned, that's from the 1600s. Um, so we have plunged our society's legal code back to prior to 1250 AD. And I think, uh, and this war on terror, of course, has only benefits a small group of people at the vast at the expense of the vast majority of citizens and even more so the citizens of the targeted countries and those people who might watch us who are in the military and the intelligence community they know better than anybody else as Eisenhower did that uh, this money could be spent for them to be employed in research or engineering or teaching or any of a number of things that would actually produce real wealth my name is Alexander Hagen. Thank you, good night, and good luck.